We continue to preview the 2023 football season, which is really right around the corner. It is just about here. Our stop today is Goodwill, Oklahoma. We get to visit with Corey Miller, who is the first-year head coach for the Oklahoma Panhandle State Aggies. Coach, first off, let's start right there. Congratulations on the new opportunity that you have there in Goodwill. Thank you. It's it's been it's been fun. It's been a little bit of a ride. A lot of stuff happened the last four months, but I'm excited to kick off and get the experience. You know, my first game here and at OPSU. And I know that game is not this Saturday. It will be September 2nd. We'll talk about your schedule a little bit later on. Uh, Goodwill, it's affectionately known, or maybe not so affectionately known by folks, it's no man's land. Yes. I've the opportunity to be up there a time or two, and uh, it, it really is. I mean, you're out there. But I have to ask you this question right now, just to start. How hot is it? Because it's been brutally hot lately. Can you practice? Yeah, yeah. It's kind of we get the desert heat out here, so the humidity is not quite – what you guys get out here. I think it's 94 right now. It feels like 95. So I'm not sure what you guys get out here. It gets a little bit hotter, I think, on the east side um, than it is over here. Now, this weekend and then Monday, it was in the triple digits. So come where I'm from, you don't get that very often. So it was, it's been a little bit more, probably more of an adjustment for me. We got a lot of kids from east Texas, you know, um, eastern Oklahoma. I think they're a lot more used to it than, than us as coaches are. So I think they handle it actually better than we do. All right. Well, I was just checking because I, I know it can there, – there's some extreme weather that can happen in yeah. that part of the state of Oklahoma. So uh, be, be ready for it, Coach. But, of course, you come from Minnesota, so you, you know where the cold is too, or at least yeah. most recently from Minnesota. Uh, Coach, new program for you, new staff coming in, and there is a lot of turnover there with the roster too. So I, I'd like you to take us through – let's start with the offense. Brandon Stevens comes back, saw a lot of time at quarterback for the Aggies last season. Take us through your offense a bit. So obviously, you know, anytime there's turnover, there's change. And even today's nowadays age, there's a lot of things that kind of happen. So, um, you know, we got, you know, you know, we don't have as many returners as we would like to have, you know, even just from not even just from the starting standpoint, but, you know, some sophomores, some juniors, and even more seniors. Our senior class right now is nine and all of them have a COVID year. I don't think all nine will take it. We'll, we'll talk to them at the end of the year, but I don't anticipate to lose much from a senior standpoint after this year, but that also means we're a young ball club. But Brandon's a two-year starter um, you know, for the team, so anytime you can get your quarterback to now get to that third-year um, upperclassman status, that's big. That's big. You know, it'd be, I'd feel a lot worse if we came in here and we got a new signal caller that's a freshman or sophomore going out there for the first time. So, you know, having Brandon back two years under his belt, um, you know, great athlete, great athlete. And he's really starting to improve, you know, his footwork, his pocket presence. You know, I really think with what we're going to be doing with him um, really allows him to showcase his strengths. Um, and I think that's going to make him better in some other areas that he struggled in at times. And so I'm really excited to see his progress in with our offense. But that kind of um, is a big piece to get. We got four um, offensive linemen that started games last year. We're returning starters. So that's big. Um, get those guys back. Um, you know, Caleb, I think, has been a three-year starter for us. And then we got Tracy and Armando started a few games for us last year as well, too. And then um, Nick, Nick Kim will be kind of our other tackle um, as we go through here. And then we'll cycle in and between a couple younger guys and a couple guys coming back from injury for the other offensive line position. So we feel we feel relatively pretty good about our starting um, five on the offensive line. And then at the receiver position, we got one Jalen Partita really has come on. He had a, he finished the year really strong at the wide receiver spot and then we have um we have actually about four really good tight ends right now so um but um juice um rodriguez and kobe hill both played a lot for them last year and will be big um impacts at the the tight end position with a couple of our newcomers coming along as well too coach i like the way that you, you went straight from quarterback to the offensive line i mean if you're if he's going to be there and, and and be in that pocket like you talk about then obviously you you definitely want that protection so uh, i appreciate the the transition really quickly we're speaking with Corey miller who is the new uh, relatively new first year head coach at oklahoma panhandle state and coach uh, we move over to the defensive side of the ball a couple of players again returning we'll talk about the turnover but also you bring back cameron dickerson uh, one of the leaders for the team last season in tackles, and Nathan Alvarado, uh, an, another leader from the secondary position. Yeah, so Nate, Nathan is kind of the one returner 
um, from the secondary. Every one of them is gone. We got a, a couple starters back, you know, um, on the def in the front seven. Our guys that played some some snaps or some you know spot duty last year, but obviously Nate kind of is. Um, been a fixture the last four years here, and we're kind of moving around cross training. We'll see where he kind of ends up uh, when it's all said and done in the secondary. Um, but Cam, Cam's Cam's a pretty uh, you know really long athletic player. Uh, we can play him inside, we can play him outside. We're going to kind of uh, move him around a little bit um, to some different spots to try to create some matchup for him because he's so athletic of a player. I really you know I'm hoping for a big year out of him um, for us. We're going to need him you know, to help these younger guys grow, you know, between Nate and Cam, they're the only seniors we have on the defense. Um, so you got a bunch of other guys coming underneath there. Um, the other guy that I think is going to really start to show up and he's just, he had a phenomenal spring and he's been, you know, super difficult to block is our nose guard, Keyshawn Murphy. He's really um, grown quite a bit. I think he's got the potential to be one of the better D linemen in this league overall. And then Victor Vila played quite a bit for us last year. And then Parker Mathis switches from offensive line to defensive line. Um, and so it gives us another older guy there. I guess he'd be our third senior. I keep thinking offensive line, but um, for the offense, but now he's on the defense. So, um, but we got a you know, handful of transfers in on that side that I think are going to really make their mark as well too. So it's going to be a, more of a question is how quickly can we grow up and gel defensively? Now that, that, and that is a big question. I know that you, when we look at uh, new names, Special teams came to mind for me the most as, as they, they're going to be new place, new faces to fill pretty much all parts of that portion of the game. Yep. So we got um, Gannon, uh, sorry, Garrett Han um, Hannon. He transferred in from McMurray. I expect him to take our punting duties. He was, he was a starting punting for McMurray the last two years. And so nice to be getting an upperclassman in there that's got game experience at the punting spot. Um, he's looked good early on there. And then we have Alan Nunez who will be new to the program. He was actually in the soccer team and wanted to kick. And so we brought him out here. Um, and so I think, you know, he's been, he's got a very strong leg. He's just starting to learn how to kick the ball, you know, not as a soccer player, but as a football player. And so I think, you know, the more reps he gets, the more he gets here, you know, we might, we might have something pretty special with him when it's all said and done. Um, but obviously he doesn't have any game experience. So that'll be kind of key to, to see where we're there with the specialists um, overall, but we do that, but we got, you know, I really expect us to be really good in the the kick return game. Jalen um, Partita um, was a very good returner, and then we, we get a, a tra one of our transfer receivers it was a two year starter at Tarleton State, and he'll be probably uh, the opposite of him. And then we got a transfer running back from um, Texas Tech as well too. So I expect those three to bop in the back for the punt returning and the kick returning. I think you're going to get see three pretty dynamic athletes back there. So I think the return game and we can get the stuff up front could be really good for us. Coach, you do have a little bit more time to work on things. Don't have the, the week zero opportunity. Week one, September 2nd, it's at home there in Anchor D Stadium in Goodwill, and the Aggies fans will have an opportunity to see you play uh, not just out of conference. Uh, in Division Two. Southwest Baptist comes to town on September 2nd, Then you get the Sooner Athletic Conference league portion of the schedule september 9th on the road at wayland baptist september 16th on the road at texas wesleyan back at home on the 23rd arkansas baptist comes to town tell us about the opening to your schedule and and your first taste of the sooner athletic conference so we start off you know obviously it's nice to start off at home but we got a challenge division two school on uh, southwest baptist coming off a winning season um you know i don't know much about them obviously first game of the year everyone's kind of new i know they graduated their multi-year starter at quarterback, but they got a thousand yard rusher coming back. I, you know, I don't know. I'm sure they got maybe some newcomers and transfers and things like that, but it's a division two football program. So uh, some of our young guys are going to get welcome to college football, you know, in the first four quarters. And so, you know, I think that's going to be really good for us, you know, um, to, to get those guys to go out there and play against that competition, you know, and see the biggest thing I think will be the issue for them is obviously having more scholarships. I still have probably have some more depth than we got. Um, but if, I feel if we can go up there and we can compete with them and, and get that thing in the late stages, that would be a big monumental step, you know, kind of for our program 
um, with like playing up and, and getting there. So we're going to see a high level of football. You know, I de- if they were in our conference, I without a doubt think they'd be competing for the conference championship. So if we can play with them, then we can play with anybody in our conference. And so it's going to be a great measuring stick early on where we're at. But it's obviously a non-con game. We're focused. Uh, you know, on the winning the sooner and competing in the sooner. And so we get Waylon right out there, similar to us, new head coach. I believe he was on the staff before, but not um, not 100% sure. I think he was, I thought, um, was their D coordinator. Um, yes. so they're kind of similar. So I'll be, you know, really, you know, I like that matchup coming out of the beginning. Then we got to go down to Fort Worth and play Texas Westland, who um, is preseason pick as as the conference champion. So we'll, we'll get the, the, the team that's picked early on. And so that'll give us a nice little early um, – indication of where we sit in terms of um, the top teams in the conference. And then obviously we can come back home for homecoming with Arkansas Baptist, who is a new to our conference. And so, you know, we got a couple really good teams kind of up there. And then I think a couple of teams that are, you know, pretty much kind of is very similar situations to us. And so, you know, you, when you look at that schedule, you, you see a couple of teams where we're going to have to play pretty damn well to, to beat. And then, you, have to, you know, some teams that I think hopefully we can take care of business with. And then I think that sets us up for the, the rest of the league schedule. I understand, Coach. And it should be a fun league schedule. The Oklahoma Panhandle State Aggies getting ready for the 2023 season. Sooner Athletic play underway in week two and the Aggies will be on the road for that one coach Corey Miller thank you very much for taking time as uh, we are going to follow the Aggies not only this season but look forward to seeing how these new players and your staff uh, take care of business there in Goodwill thank you sir for being with us here on Midwest Sports Net absolutely appreciate it thank you for your time